So in this video, we're going to talk about repeated measures ANOVA. In a one-way ANOVA, that's one independent variable, the dependent variable is compared between different groups, and each group is independent of each other, meaning there are different participants in each group. But what if we want to have the same sample of students or research participants being tested on multiple occasions? Well, I talked about the pair t-test in, in another video, and in the pair t-test, the same sample is being tested twice. But if we're testing that same sample on three or more occasions, then we can't use a pair t-test. We have to use what's known as a repeated measures ANOVA, where the repeated measures is time or trials or, or different occasions. Give one example here. Let's just say researchers are interested in diet, a certain diet plan, and want to know what the change in body composition is measured using a BOTOT is. Um, throughout you know a few weeks or throughout 60 days. So this is a group of mill runners. They were tested using BOTOD on day one, day 30, and day 60. So in this case, the one independent variable is time. In this case, three time points. So that's known as a three-level repeated measures ANOVA. It's an analysis of variance to determine the effect of time, day one, day 30, day 60, on the dependent variable, which happens to be percentage of body fat using BOTOD. I'll give you another example here, and we'll do this in our studio. Uh, researchers want to know the differences in what's known as a C-reactive protein, or CRP. This is an indicator for a cardiovascular uh, disease or the risk of a cardiovascular disease. And they wanted to compare them between three different stages within a six-month training regimen. So the three time points happens to be pre, mid, post. That's the independent variable. That's three levels of the independent variable of time points, or you could say time intervals or occasions. Dependent variable is CRP. Because that is an indicator of cardiovascular disease, the lower that number, the better. So we're going to use the three-level repeated, repeated measures ANOVA. And we're going to try, go ahead and try this in our studio. Okay, so I already loaded the one-way repeated measures ANOVA data set. This is the CRP data set in our studio. So I'm just going to run the library, make sure I have the tidyverse library loaded. I am going to assign the data that is really in SPSS format. I'm going to assign that to the data frame or data vector called CRP. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and convert it to long format just to show you. I'm going to go ahead and write on the console here. Let's do view. Sorry. Can't type today. CRP. And notice that the repeated measures is, uh, is, is formatted what's called Y. That means each of the time points has its own column. So in this case, CRP is in pre, mid, and post. In our studio, the way the ANOVAs work in our studio, uh, prefers to have the format in long form. So I have some code here that converts it from Y to long format. And let me show you how this looks. CRP long. And basically what it does is has a CRP as a dependent variable, obviously, here, and then time, which is pre, mid, and post, is its own factor. It has its own column here, it's shown here. So that's it. So it's the same data set, it's just converted into long. So we're going to go ahead and calculate some summary statistics. Show you here. And I'm going to go ahead and plot that. So I plot that. It's shown here on the bottom right. And let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So just based on the column plot here, the y-axis represents the mean CRP level. And these are the levels at the pre, mid, and post in the uh, training regimen. So you can see that the average CRP levels decrease. What we want to know is that statistically significant. Is that different from what the null hypothesis is that the in, in the general population so the null hypothesis in this case is that there is no that exercise or training regimen or really the time in the training regimen has no effect on CRP so we are going to run a repeated measures ANOVA in our studio to determine this okay so in our studio I have here the code for Performing a one-way repeated measure. So now remember, it's called one-way because we have one independent variable, which in this case is time, 
or trial, pre, mid, and post. And the code for it is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, what this means is that I'm going to assign the results of the ANOVA to this data frame called CRP underscore ANOVA. AOV is the function to perform uh, what's called a linear model. And the linear model in this case will provide a repeated measures ANOVA. That means that the dependent variable CRP is dependent on time, that's pre, minute, post, as well as the random noise, the error that's inherent in the subjects themselves, and this is the code for that. And, and this uh, data is found in the data set CRP underscore long. So we'll go ahead and run that. And click on summary, and that will provide the ANOVA results. So this is what it looks. Uh, this is a typical summary ANOVA table. And what we're looking at here is the time, the, the row marked by time. This displays the degrees of freedom, the sum of squares, and the what's called the F statistic or the F ratio, which is the ratio between the true variance due to time and variance due to some unknown factors, what we call error or residuals. And this is the probability of observing that F value, which in this case is less than 0.1%. And the way you write this in APA format is like this. So you have the F statistic that is a function of the degrees of freedom due to time, and that's calculated by the number of repeated tests minus one, as well as the degree of freedom due to residuals, and that's calculated here. So this is the sample size minus one multiplied by the degrees of freedom due to the number of repeated tests, which as I mentioned earlier is repeated tests minus one, so that equals 18. Um, so just kind of give you a heads up, there are 10 subjects in this group. So degrees of freedom due to su subjects is nine. And the number of tests was three, so that uh, three minus one is obviously two, so nine times two is equals 18. Uh, the F statistic is 26.9. That Again, that's the ratio between what's the, the true variance due to time in this case and the error variance that particular F statistics is largely improbable if the null hypothesis in the population was true. In fact, it's a less than 1% or less than 0.1% probability of observing 26.9 in our, our um, statistic here, our, our statistical analysis here. So we did conclude that there is a statistical significant difference in CRP between the pre, mid, and post uh, time points during the training regimen. Now, because the repeated measures of ANOVA found that there was significant difference in CRP between pre, mid, and post, we need to do a follow-up test, much like what we do for a one-way ANOVA, because it doesn't tell, tell us between which two time points or groups of time points actually differ. So we do a post hoc test, and in a one-way ANOVA, we use the Atuki or Chefe, but in repeated measures, we can't use those post hoc slash follow-up tests because those assume that the groups that are being compared are independent. As you know, with the repeated measures, we have the same sample being tested on multiple occasions. So we pretty much use a pair t-test. It's called an adjusted pair t-test, where we run a bunch of pairwise comparison using a pair t-test, and we adjust for the number of comparison using what's called the Bonferroni correction or adjustment technique. And so in our studio, you run this line of code. This is line 36 and 37 here that I have highlighted. Uh, I run what's called a pairwise.t test. Pairwise means it's, gonna, it's a pairwise comparison. We're following up using this pair t test on CRP, our dependent variable. Um, between those three time points, that's the independent variable. Obviously, it's true. And the adjustment that we're making to our alpha levels known as the Bonferroni, that's the technical use. I'm going to hit run. And then the output looks something like this, where the p-value between uh, the, the the mean difference in CRP between the pre and midpoint is less than 0 0.001. Same with the pre versus post, um, but not between the mid and post. So basically, what it means is there is a significant decrease in CRP between the pre and midpoints as well as between the pre and post. Point. And the way that you would uh, 
display or report this finding is, uh, you know, what I like to do is put this in a graph. This is the same graph I showed you earlier. The only difference now is I've added these p-values that show that there was a significant difference in CRP between the pre and the mid, as well as between the pre and the post time points. I shouldn't say difference. I should say there's a change. But specifically, there was a reduction. There was a reduction in CRP, mean CRP, between the pre and the mid, as well as between the pre and the post time point in this analysis. So that's how you would interpret a repeated measures ANOVA. That's how you perform and interpret a repeated measures ANOVA using RStudio. Uh, one caveat, that I don't typically like this type of design because it really only analyzes the effect of time on the dependent variable, in this case, CRP. It doesn't really... Um, analyze the variance or analyze the effect of the training regimen itself because there could be doing something else and there's nothing um, to compare it to. So um, in a, another video, I'll talk about a different design that takes into account both the training itself by comparing it to a control or to another training regimen as well as time using what's known as a, a two-way mixed ANOVA, which is a typical design for a randomized control trial.